everybody, Jimmy Smith doing the pre-fight breakdown for uh, UFC Fight Night Korea. It's Edgar versus a Korean Zombie. Interesting main event, interesting co-main event. The rest of the card, of course, features a lot of Korean fighters. Uh, nobody that well-known outside of the main event. Of course, Volkan Uzdemir in the co-main uh, fought for the title against DC and came up short. So, anyway, let's start from the bottom. I'm basically drive by everything but the main event. I think that deserves a, a much closer look. But uh, we start out with uh, Kyung Ho Kang versus uh, Ping Yuan Liu. Um, Liu lost to Jonathan Martinez his last time out. But uh, the... Um, who did Kang fight? He fought Brandon Davis. Uh, Kyung Ho Kang came up with a win against Brandon Davis. Brandon Davis, a brawler, a guy who really likes to come forward uh, strong, likes to make it a scrap, but Hyo King, in a very close fight, kept it a little too technical for him. Was able to counter-strike and, and, and kind of catch Brandon Davis as vulnerable as he is coming in and got a close split decision. Is either guy a, a fireball in the weight class? No. Uh, but I think Ho Kang comes out on top for the same reasons he came out on top against Brandon Davis. He's good at catching guys in between. He's very, very composed under attack. So by the slimmest of margins, I'm going with Ho Kang in this one. Uh, Jung Young Park versus Mark Andre Berriol. The difference here, and why I'm going with Berriol, Berriol's not small for this weight class, and he tends to win by knockout. I think eight times in his career, he tends to finish with his hands. And Jung Young Park has been between like 170 and 180, not a natural middleweight at all. And that's something a lot of fighters, when I used to call M1, and I would be overseas sometimes in Korea and Japan. And I would say, what's it like taking on American fighters? And the first thing they always say is, they're big. They're big. They're strong. They're wrestlers. They're used to cutting weight. We don't get a lot of that out here. Even if you're a big, uh, natural, middleweight-sized fighter, a lot of times you can go through fighting in Korea and not take on anyone who cuts like an, an American fighter, like a North American fighter, like a Canadian fighter. They cut a lot of weight. And so Park is one of those guys. He's a tweener. He's between 170 and 185. That's a bad place to be. And Barry Alt, not the most skilled guy in the world, but an excellent finisher and a hard puncher. I think Barry Alt comes out on top on that one. Uh, Dalun Jung versus Mike Rodriguez. The last time Jung came out with a guillotine against Ibragamov, he's won 11 in a row. That says a lot. And what you have to look at with the matchmaking here is Korean fans like seeing Korean fighters win. So if there's someone who's on their way up and the UFC wants to test them out, I see a couple of these that are streaking Korean fighter versus middle-of-the-road UFC guy with a couple of fights to see if they can get over that hump and get over with the Korean fans. If it's someone they want to market as, we're going back to Korea doing a fight night, maybe a pay-per-view, and you want to get on that card, this is your opportunity. And that's the kind of opportunity it has for Jung to me. Uh, Martinez only 1-2 and two in the UFC. Both of his losses by decision, 1-1 one, one by knockout. So he's one of those bubble guys. All right, he's a veteran, been in the UFC, before. he has three UFC fights. He's not exactly going to be a pushover. He was a contender series guy. But it's more of a setup for Dalun Jung to see what he's got. So I'm going with Dalun Jung in this fight. Duhu Choi versus Charles uh, Jordan. He's Canadian, so i got to kind of roll that a little bit. Duhu Choi, a long time off. January 2018, he fought uh, Jeremy Stevens and came up short. Before that, fought Cub Swanson and came up short. But that's a long time off, coming up on two years. So that's kind of the X factor here. And Charles uh, Jordan is another one of those guys. He's undersized for the weight class. Lost a decision to Desmond Green. Desmond Green, of course, you know, athletic, big for the weight class, wins a lot of decisions, keeps the pressure on, good wrestler. No shame in that one. But the X factor here is the time off. What will that do to Duhu Choi? Will he come in sharp? Um, obviously against Jeremy Stevens, got finished in that fight. It was a Jeremy Stevens kind of fight. Fell a little too much for kind of the reckless offense of Jeremy Stevens. Wasn't really able to get anything going on its own. And, and, and once it went bad and it went to the ground, the hell is that? Oh. Anyway, so the um, the thing for me is that uh, in this fight, whenever you have more than a year, two years off, that is one of those things that really affects your timing, it really affects your preparation, it affects your nerves coming into a fight. Um, I'm just saying Charles Rodon might come in a little bit sharper. He doesn't have the kind of time off to who Choi has had off. Um, of course, Korean Zombie came back from a long way. I think that's the exception more than the rule. Volkan Uzdemir versus Alexander uh, Rakic. The, the theme of the UFC a lot of times is 
on to the next one. You lose the title shot, hey, you're kind of yesterday's news, we're moving on. A lot of times they use those names to build up the next name. It's not a matter of the old contender, unless you are a Conor McGregor, big ticket seller, big pay-per-view guy, it's hard to get back to the top. Also, Volkan Uzumir, blown away by DC, wasn't particularly close. There was no sense of, boy, I can't wait to see this guy fight for the title again. Once that happens to you, a lot of times you are given some very, very, very tough fights that are more to build up the other guy than to build up your stock. And that was the case with Volkan Uzumir. Anthony Smith, Dominic Reyes, both those guys, title shots. Anthony Smith already has his, Dominic Reyes has his coming up. Came back against Alir Latifi. But once again, he's given an inc- an incredibly difficult fight um, against Alexander Rakish. And, and Rakish is kind of a, a younger, stronger version of Volkan Uzumir. Great puncher. Great finishers. Last two have been in the first rounds. Last one, Jimmy Manoa, another tough striker, finishing him in under a minute. So in many ways, Volkan Ustamir is facing himself on the way up. That almost never works out well for the old Lion. So uh, I got to go. Also, he's on a great streak. Hasn't lost since his first fight. That was in 2011. He's undefeated since 2012. Uh, Rakesh, I think, is one of those guys that are looking at as, hey, this next generation at 205, could he be one of those? Uh, whether or not he can be, I think he gets past Volkan Uzdemir. Uh, so I go with Rakesh, probably by knockout. Frankie Edgar versus a Korean zombie. I have gone back and forth on this one for a lot of reasons. Let me, as I've said, and, and people have criticized me, strangely enough, in the comments section about picking fights. Some guy said you're just making an educated guess. Yeah, that's what picking fights is. It's an educated guess. You lay out the logic, and you're making a, a weighted guess. But you're still guessing. You don't know. I don't know any more than you guys do who's going to win. But I can lay out my logic. And then from there, I can make a pick. Normally, in a fight like this, the first time they, they were supposed to fight, and uh, Frankie pulled his bicep and had to pull out, I would have gone with Frankie Edgar. In a fight like this, you almost always go with Frankie Edgar. It's about guts and heart. It's going to be a long war. It's probably going to go five rounds. Almost always pick Frankie Edgar in those situations. The caveats here that get to me, uh, for example, this is at 145 pounds. Frankie Edgar is done at 145 pounds. Even if he wins this fight, he had two opportunities against Jose Aldo, one against Max Holloway. He could not win the title. He's not going to win the title. At 145 pounds. He was already headed down to 135. This fight came up. He took it. He's that kind of guy. Great. But it's a very tough, grueling, difficult fight against an experienced and dangerous opponent for very little reward. And the way I mean that is it's late notice, so it wouldn't be a big deal if he lost. I don't think fans really hold it against him. He's already going down to 135. Even if he has a great performance... Against the Korean Zombie, it's not going to launch him back into contender status. I don't think he's going to get there again. So I'm already leaving this weight class. There's not a lot of motivation for him to to go out there and win. Now, he's not the kind of guy to overlook anybody and, kind of, and need that extra motivation. My point is, they're kind of maybe catching him on a down at 145. His sights are on 135. That's where he wants to go and be a contender and all these things. This is a fight on the way there. So... It doesn't have that, the gravitas of if this were his 135 pound debut, for example. Korean Zombie has looked great since coming back. Of course, a knockout over Dennis Bermudez. Almost had Yair Rodriguez. One second left and he wins and he falls for the, the craziest elbow you have ever seen in your life. Uh, amazing stuff. But in a fight that I believe he was winning. Then he comes back, fights Moicano, and knocks him out in the first round. So he's looked great since coming back. He's bigger than Frankie Edgar. He has a similar style, a similar work rate. I think he's a better finisher at 145 than Frankie Edgar. So normally, kind of the X factors make me think he might be catching Frankie Edgar at exactly the right time. And also, I don't care who you are. I don't care how good your work ethic is and all these things. The losses he's had have taken a toll on Frankie Edgar. They have. And one thing about Frank Yeager, not necessarily being a great finisher, especially at the elite level, um, you go through a lot of rounds. A lot of rounds. You know, the Max Holloway fight went five rounds. got beat up every single round. Jose Aldo, five rounds both times. That grueling kind of grind, his work ethic in the gym is legend, catches up with you eventually. 
Will he go off a cliff in this fight? Probably not. But once again, I think the Korean Zombie is catching Frank Edgar at the right time, where his mind might be on a weight class change. This is a late notice fight. His cardio, which is off the charts generally, might not be where it normally is, just because he didn't have a full camp. All those X factors make me pick the Korean Zombie in the final. So uh, we'll see how it goes. But as always, I'm there after the fight to go over everything I did wrong. I don't run from my picks. All right. See you guys afterward.